Thank you for tuning in to the Pointless Talks podcast. This episode is being brought to you as a part of the many things that Pointless creates. For our returning listeners, thank you so much for coming back. And if this is your first episode, welcome, get comfortable, and please keep an open mind. Welcome back, y'all. Listen, I'm having a late start because I fell asleep. (laughs) The perks of recording everything by yourself. (laughs) I fell asleep. Woke up and it was 11-11 and I was like, huh, let's make a wish. I didn't make a wish, but I thought it. Um, but yeah, welcome back. Um, it is officially V-Day because it's after midnight now while I'm recording. Um, saying it again for those who are listening and not watching, there is video. And I'm wearing this cute little shirt. I don't know if y'all can see it. But <laughs> it says, I'm delusional. I'm not desperate. Because... We need to talk about relationships (laughs) and the, well, this episode is going to be about me because it's pointless talks and hi, hello. Uh, Before I get into it though, let me not skip ahead too far. It is another day and we want to know what is a good thing that happened today. Uh, We're going to pretend that it is still Tuesday because the way I fell asleep was really disrespectful and we're going to talk about the food that put me to sleep. So I sometimes do like taste tests and I was so geeked when I went to Popeye's. Um, I'm pretty sure my stomach is going to hate me for it in about four hours. It's been, we're halfway through the eight. I mean, usually it takes about two hours for your food to digest, whatever. But my stomach likes to do a little overtime sometimes. Like, hey, you thought you were safe? <laughs> let's, 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 let's hold out for about a shift. <laughs> See what happens next. <laughs> so... Not sure what's going to happen there, but I did a taste test for, what is it, garlic parmesan chicken for Popeye's? Yeah, I'd be eating some foolishness because before hitting 30, do some math on my age, I used to be able to eat whatever I want. I used to always say I have a big, a brick bottom stomach, let me knock on wood, because I really did. Like I could eat literally anything and I would not be like too negatively affected by it. But as I've gotten older, between heartburn and, you know, acid reflux and lactose intolerance, (laughs) my body has changed quite a bit. So I can't eat all the foolishness I used to be able to eat because, yeah, I'm I'm, I'm at war with myself afterwards (laughs) because my body's like, girl, why did you do this to us? Add in the fact that I've been eating very well for the past few months honestly the other day I was craving some oxtail and I went and I got oxtail and I had rice and peas and I was like my first time having rice in a few months and it like kick-started this craving for rice because I I try not to eat rice there's always rice in the house in case someone comes over and wants rice and they don't want quinoa or vegetables or whatever it is that I'm cooking so I usually have rice just in case because you know it's rice but I love rice like I have (sighs) I have such a strong allegiance to rice. <laughs> like, I love rice. I love rice so much. My father would be very disappointed to hear me say that because I'm supposed to eat rice only on Sunday because it's Papa's belly. Blah, 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 blah. Yeah, my banana and all them something days is good too. But rice makes me really, really happy. So I've been trying to stay away because, you know, trying to be festival, not dumpling. So what you call it? So I, you know, I've been on a rice kick and I was just like, oh my gosh, I'm... I said, after V-Day, though, I'm going back to it. I'm going to cleanse this whole thing. I'm going to do a juice and, like, whatever, whatever. I'm doing something. I got to go grocery shopping. I, I, I'm doing something. But this this past week has been so bad. And to top it off, I was like, hmm, let's go to Popeye's. Let's go to Popeye's and see what happens. So I'm in the drive through long as hell. And I'm like, bro, nobody is cooking the night before Valentine's Day? Like, I can't be the only one, like, just, like, I can't, I can't ever be the only one, there's always a line, so, looking at the menu, and I'm, because I, well, I went there for the sweet and spicy chicken, you know, um, so I'm in the, me- I'm in the line, I'm looking at the menu, and I was like, oh my gosh, the chicken I did the survey for is here, I was like, oh, I want to try it, so I tried it, and it did not include the ingredients that I suggested, because it's supposed to be garlic, parmesan, it gave mostly parmesan, but I have, I have an obsession with garlic. Like, I have a really bad problem where garlic is concerned. (laughs) Like, I love garlic. I don't think you can ever put too much garlic on anything. And I'm not saying that lightly. Like, I, 
I love garlic. <laughs> and I realized how much I love garlic when I was involved with someone who didn't like garlic as much as I did. And they pointed it out. And I was like, how dare you? Like, what? What do you mean? You could actually add more garlic if we're being honest. Like, what? But, <laughs> but yeah, so that was my only takeaway from that. And then, like, it, the presentation, I, I noted that it did not look visually appealing after, like, the way it's plated. Like, it's just dashing a box and just, mm. anyways, that was exciting for me. That was my little good thing that happened. I was just like, oh, my gosh, that's cute. Um, <laughs> I mean, it doesn't make, like, a huge impact on my life, but that's not the point of it. It was just something that made me go, oh, my God. So that was my something good for today. Um, what was yours? Give y'all some time to think about it. Say it out loud. So in the spirit of today, I have a few topics. Well, no, I have one topic that I really want to talk about. And I kind of wanted to touch on something else prior to that, like in relationships. I find it very interesting because, you know, we always talk about how like girls be stealing hoodies of like their mask or boyfriend um, when they're in relationships and things like just like you got a hoodie, you got a sweater. It's hers now. Right. Whereas I see that with like femme for femme relationships, a lot of women apparently like to change like share clothes like that's a that's a thing. I am brainwashed by Jamaican culture where when I ended a bar clothes thing. And I feel a sense of, <laughs> I don't know if it's shame or what, where like, I just, I'm, I'm not doing it. I've, even growing up, I've never been the type to share clothes with friends or anything like that. I remember like me and my brother, for, for a period of time, we had a lot of the same clothes. It was definitely giving twin. That's why we couldn't beat the allegations. Um, but we had like, and we would, sometimes we would play into it because we're annoying like that. My, if you've ever been around me and my brother, we are, <laughs> we're very annoying in the sense that we like to troll people. So we definitely played into that. But as far as like sharing clothes, like absolutely not. Like even with him, if anything, he would have something and I'd be like, I'm stealing that. Like for sentimental reasons, because like that's my big brother. Like, hell yeah, I'm stealing it. You don't want it no more? Mine. Thanks. But if he saw me in something that was his, he'd be like, bro, seriously? And I'm like what happened <laughs> so yeah but I've never really shared clothes and I think that also goes into like not having like a sister my age or in my age group like growing up I've, I've never had to share clothes I'm, I'm very selfish when it comes to certain things my food also like I'm not sharing my food I don't I was explaining to my friend earlier I have always been very like no it's my food like no you, you can taste it but don't ask me for some of my food, especially if I like offered to buy you food or bring you food previously. And you're like, no, I'm fine. Dead. Like, honestly, just dead. Like, don't, like, no, no. And when I was a kid, I was a sick kid, like teenagers, like my mom, my mom, <laughs> my mom be so sick of me because I'm ignorant. Like, I'm really ignorant. Like, I'm, I'm ignorant real, real bad. So I would be like, you know, I'll come home and I'm like, hey, you guys want food? Everybody says no, or someone asks for something else, and it's like, okay, I taste it. Yeah, sure. Oh, let me get some. You know what? You can have it. It's okay. I'm done. I'm. I don't even have an appetite anymore. It's yours. And my mom used to be like, Janae, don't be like that. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> like, um, my appetite is actually gone. I no longer have a desire for this. Like, it's fine. Like, it's okay. And it happened on a few occasions. My mom would be cooking, be like, yo, your haggish bad. And I'm like, okay. But, like, no, I would rather go buy you your own thing than sit here and share my food with you. Like, no. Now, if it's, like, a situation where, like, you know, we in some rough times and we have to share food, that's one thing. But if I offer to buy you food and then you come on and eat out of my plate, like, please don't do that. Biggest, like, <laughs> that's probably the worst thing about dating me. <laughs> please don't do that. Like, don't don't ask for my food. Like, now if we beforehand set up and we're like we're gonna share like let's say we go somewhere we're like we're sharing appetizers or we're you know ordering for the table and we're gonna share that's completely different I have no problem doing that me and my friends have done that I've done that with people like that's not an issue but if we have designated meals for ourselves and you want to be in my place no you can have it I'm actually not hungry anymore it's okay and maybe that's something I need to work on. Or maybe y'all need to, like, not, you know? Who knows? Somebody's wrong here, not admitting fault, but that's just it. 
<laughs> Anyways, I wanted to talk about <sighs> red flags that I've ignored in relationships. <laughs> like, they, you know how they talk about, like, you know, you have on your rose-colored glasses? Like, I want to talk about that stuff because... <laughs> this list, <laughs> I, I'm probably going to be reading directly from this list <laughs> because Mr. Proper I'm a real idiot when it comes to like, I'm like a kid with a new toy sometimes and I've had to make a conscious effort within the past couple years because I decided, you know, I, I want to actually be in a relationship that makes sense to be in. I want to be with someone who is going to compliment me, who is going to be considerate of me and consistent, communicate all the fun things that make things wonderful, you know, compatibility and all them, all them C's, right? And I was thinking about like the things that I've overlooked in relationships and not to say that like, I was just like, oh, you know, I, I just want to be with you so bad. It was, I wasn't dating intentionally. I can be 100%. I'll be the first one to admit I was not dating intentionally for a period of time. I ended up in relationships versus, you know, wanting to necessarily be in relationships for, for a long time, for a long, long time. I Even if it wasn't like an official boyfriend-girlfriend situation or girlfriend-girlfriend, whatever, I ended up in situationships <laughs> because, like, I didn't mind. And I think that's such, that's not a good way to go about being in a relationship, in my opinion. Anyways, I don't feel like that's something you should just end up in. That should be something that both parties are actively pursuing. And it's something that both parties want. Because I sit and I think about the amount of times that people have poached conversations about marriage with me. And I'm like, in my head, I'm like, huh? <laughs> like, yes, I get it. Like, um, like, I get it. I get it. You know, like, you know, I get it. But is that the vibe I'm giving you that I want to marry you? Is that, yikes, sorry. You know, because I don't half step when it comes to what I put into a relationship. And it's actually kind of bad because like if I don't want to be here, why am I doing the most? And I know that's, y'all probably listen to like, girl, that's fucked up. <laughs> but <sighs> I think it has a lot to do with not prioritizing myself and what I want, because I'm always like, I'm going to be okay. Like, I'm going to figure out a way for myself to be okay. And realistically speaking, I deserve more than just okay. Like, I need to be, like, top of the top, like, super excited, elated, like, jumping with joy, giddy, like, all of the fun things that comes with, like, you know, a little, uh, you know, a little relationship or whatever. Like, be equally, like, ah enamored with the person so and I keep hearing people say oh you know one person's gonna like the other one more and whoa okay whatever I want us to both be wrapped up in each other like I don't want it to just be one person wrapped up in the other and, and I damn sure don't want to be the one wrapped up and the other person is not because excuse me what so yeah so we're gonna go through some of the red flags that I ignored because I was just like, eh, we're chilling, whatever, or whatever. So this one, the first one I'm bringing up, it really cracked me up because I was not in a relationship with this person. Like, well, they're all relationships, but we weren't committed to one another. There was no title or anything. We were in the dating phase. You know, we were early stages, kind of. And I was washing dishes, and this person states to me, Why? like, actually, no, I'm sitting there, like, first of all, I hate when I'm in the kitchen and people are watching me. I do not like when people hover over me. I, I don't like it. I don't like to be watched. I'm not an exhibitionist. I'm a voyeur. Take, do with that information what you will. I, am, <laughs> I don't like being watched. I had, hmm, that's why it took so long for me to get this freaking video thing going. But <laughs> I don't like being watched, like, especially if you're in the room and you're just, like, staring at me. I hate when I'm being trained at jobs and they're just standing over me. Watch, like, don't go away and do something else. I'll call you if I need help. Like, no. <laughs> so, and I think that has to do with, like, something with submission, but we'll get into that later. So I'm standing there and, like, I feel the energy of the person, like, you know, and I was like, hey. And they're like, hey. And I'm like, whatever. So they say, oh, wow. I'm like, what? They're like, oh, yeah, I know you're a good one. You wash the handles of the pots. What? I was like, what do you, what do you mean? 
people don't do that and they're like oh you'd be surprised and in my head right if you are dealing with somebody and they're not washing the handles of your utensils of the pots that's nasty that's nasty and that right there should have been the red flag that told me i needed to get away from this person because obviously you're not used to the type of caliber of woman that i am because what kind of nastiness you're dealing with? Ugh, ugh. they told me that and i was just like like i was put off but I, in retrospect i should have been like leave now get out to like get away so that was one that really just threw me i was like something so simple just like that's that's a red flag you're used to like nasty people that's nasty like and if you are out there listening to this and you do not wash the handles of your pot, oh, because you, that's nasty. Wash the handles of your pots. Wash the handles of your spoons, your knives, your forks, your spatulas, your everything. That's. Did y'all not watch Osmosis Jones? <sighs> Anyways, so another person used to always say, like, in the first few conversations, I'm always blocking people. I'm the block queen. That right there should have been <laughs> the end of the conversation, the communication, all of that should have been a dub right there because that's a clear sign of poor communication or judgment to begin with and possibly issues with enforcing boundaries because how do you get to block? You know what I'm saying? And my dumbass decided to sit in the situation and guess what? I got blocked. <laughs> I got blocked and then unblocked. But my thing is, right, ain't no coming back from a block with me. Like, if I block you, except that one time. But we'll we'll get to that. <laughs> Ooh. Uh, <laughs> but I feel like if you and someone are supposed to be friends or, you know, getting to know one another, if you need space and you request space, there should be no need for you to block the other party unless they are violating that request for space and they're like const constantly hitting you up. But listen, I'm the type of person you do not have to block. You don't you don't have to block me. I barely hit you up as it is. I'm responding more so than anything. Like I am not. I'm not the type to like run down nobody like what chase for what for what? Like, have you have you seen me? Do you know the things that I have accomplished? <laughs> the things that I'm capable of? Why am I running you down? Man or woman, please. Anyways, so that was, you know, and then the blocking situation happened. I ended up getting unblocked and then there was some communication and I was just like, what was the point of that? Like, what was like, no, I don't like that. Like, don't tell me you're the block queen, you're the block king, you you just be blocking people, you just be disappearing. That's weird as hell. Like use your mouth <laughs> say use your words <laughs> say things like you know because you never know what a person is willing to do until you say something to them and i know a lot of people fear rejection they fear people lashing out and all of that that's something you need to deal with before you start dating and i i and i'm reading this list through because i feel like a lot of people settle through red flags because they yearn for companionship and they don't want to be alone and they feel lonely and woo 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 <sighs> listen y'all got to sit down and unpack y'all shit one day and i suggest sooner rather than later but we're gonna get to the you know the motivational speech at the end of this so ah uh, this one is one of my favorites it's, it's really not but i I don't like when people make, like, yes, I just finished just big up myself, but I don't like when people make statements as if, like, they're looking for my flaws. Like, oh, what's wrong with you? Or your track record is too good. Are you looking for somebody to, like, oppress? <laughs> why, why are you looking for my flaws, like, out the gate? And don't get me wrong. I'm definitely one of those that, like, keep one eye open because you never know with people. But I'm always the first to tell people at the gate, listen, I'm emotionally unstable. <laughs> like, I'm a cancer. Like, the moon changes, my mood changes. Like, it's, I'm, I'm joking. I'm, I'm not joking. I'm, I'm so serious. Like, for the most part, I'm stable. But things happen. I, fe I feel things on such a deep level. I feel everything. Now, a matter of whether or not I harp on it or if I need to, like, expound upon it all the time, absolutely not. 
it's not a requirement, but I feel everything. So sometimes I'm like, hey, I don't want to talk about it because I have boundaries. And kind of, I'm, I'm at a place right now, I absolutely refuse to lower my standards. Um, there, were pre- there were situations previously where I, certain standards I would not budge on because, you know, these are requirements for me. But now I'm, I'm not skimping on any of them. I mean, I'm, uh, maybe some physical things, you know, like if you're a little short or like, you ain't got the fattest ass, I guess, you know, sure, whatever, we can work, we can work with something, but (laughs) as far as, like, moral value, things that you, like, come with, like, who you are as a person, I'm, I'm not, not interested in skimping on that, I've, I've done enough community service (laughs) in my life, um, shop lock, volunteer service done, I'm not, Unless this is a 501c corporation, I'm not interested in <laughs> volunteering my time. So I'm, no. Uh, let's see here. Oh, with men. Oh, my good. Actually, no, with women, too, because I've noticed on the dating apps, oh, deep interest, like deep interest in me being bi. Like, I don't even like to identify as bi. I like people. But being overly intrigued at the idea that I am attracted to people is a turn off for me <laughs> because are you interested in me or like sexual possibilities i'm i'm not here to fulfill your fetishes like please please go work out your kinks <laughs> when it comes to you know third parties and things of that nature before you show up to me. I need someone who has gone through their whole phase, who knows that they like this, they like that. I mean, granted, we're going to learn things as we grow, but if you have been wanting to do a threesome all your life and you've never done a threesome, don't don't think it's going to happen here. Whether it's a FFF or it's a MFF or a damn sure ain't going to be no MMF, but <laughs> it's not it's not happening here. I'm if that's something that comes up, it's going to be something that comes up later on, but we're not discussing that out the gate. Like you're and especially for men, especially, and you haven't brought up anything about cunnilingus. Where, what kind of threesome are you trying to have? And do you eat? Like, what? <laughs> like, are you giving head? No, like, no. I also don't like when men talk about sex too much out the gate. Like, that's, I don't like when anyone talks about sex too much out the gate. Like, we can gloss over it at some point but out the gate like oh yeah I scissor buddy what what is the thing oh my gosh I've had it earlier I forgot to forget screenshot it but one of the trends I've seen oh, trends you know I work in an industry that fucking monitors trends but one of the trends I've noticed with like the dating apps is I'm looking for a freaky best friend like the girls are looking for scissor sisters no <laughs> like Tripping is absolutely wonderful. It's a beautiful act. But baby girl, if you just want to rub parts, don't don't click on my page. Like just go the other way. Sorry. Uh let's see here. Ooh. I don't like when people liquor shame. <laughs> I don't weed shame anybody. Don't liquor shame me. Um making comments about my alcohol consumption. Um, for the most part, I usually only drink on Tuesdays with Taco Tuesday, um, and I haven't even done that in a while. Um, or trying to change my mind about things that I've already said no to. Telling me, you know, you like that when I say I don't tell me what to do. Um, watching how people spend their money. Um, all of those are encompassed under one because it's pertaining to one person. But there's this um scene where Jill Scott was on, I think it was Breakfast Club, and she was saying, don't tell me, you can't tell me what to do if you can't tell me what to do. But if you can tell me what to do, then you can tell me what to do. And when I tell you that touched me in my spirit, because yes, you you have to be able to. It's not something that everyone like has. You have like, no, and don't, don't tell me what to do. <laughs> like, don't, I'm a brat. Don't tell me what to do. Like, don't, like, no. So all of that, like first the comments about me drinking was very like, oh, be careful, sir, ma'am, person, they don't do that. Like I understand caring, but 
if someone is telling you, oh, I'm, you know, I'm out with friends, whatever, whatever. And first of all, you've never heard anything about them being inebriated. You've never, you, you don't even know what they're like when they drink. The first thing to like arrive at is not to make it seem like they have a problem with drinking. And maybe that's my own guilt. Maybe it's my own guilt. But I, it's never that serious for me, especially with liquor. Like, what? No. So that was just, that was just a clear sign. Like, all of those things were just a clear sign. Like, okay, you're controlling. Like, you're, <laughs> you're, you're controlling and it's not going to work. Especially monitoring how people spend. Oh, you're buying this? Oh, you're spending on that? Or, you like, we all watch at Gal Money for, like, excuse me, is you giving me the money? If you didn't give me the money, shut up. Like, and even if you did give me the money, you gave it to me to spend it how I wanted to. So, what is all this talking for? Like, leave it. So, another one that's like a huge red flag for me. Introducing me to your children within the first few weeks of knowing each other. I don't care if we are two women. I don't care if you are a man and I am a woman. I think that that's not okay. I'm not a parent, though. You know, I ain't got a dog in this fight. But I feel like if you're so quick to introduce me to your kids, how many people have your kids met? And don't give me the, oh, you know, I know that you're special. I mean, whatever. I, I don't, that makes me very uncomfortable. If you have children and you're dating, I feel like that should be something that is a privilege that shouldn't be a regular part of dating you. You know, like having access to you is one thing. Having access to your child is another thing because people are fucking weird. People are weird. You never really know. So it's like, why are you introducing people to your children? Like out the gate. Like I've known you for less than two months. Why am I around your child? Your young child at that. Like, no, that's that's weird. Um, oh, oh, these last two are good. Okay. So I talked about this before, love bombing, because, you know, it's hard for me. I understand that you're in love with me. <laughs> like, I'm in love with me. I, I understand. So it's kind of hard for me when someone is, like, up my ass, out the gate, and they're just like, oh, my God, I don't want to talk to you all the time. I miss you. I love, oh, look at me. See? Talking shit gets hit. <laughs> but, you you know, like, I'm, we're having all this conversation, and everything is great, and it's a, it's, it's a lot of, it's a lot of adoration. It's a lot. And uh, with a Leo Venus, you know, <laughs> I get it. I get it. I, I completely understand it. But because I romanticized my life, that's another reason why I'm just like, ooh, ooh, into Lululand. Like, of course, this is amazing. We're probably going to get married on a beach in Jamaica. And we're going to, like, honeymoon in Ibiza. Ibiza. Um, but, you know what I'm saying? Like, I feel like if you're love bombing, you should also have, like, a flip side where you're also realistic about what's happening. Like, someone said that falling asleep on the phone is a first sign of a toxic relationship. And... Maybe I'm toxic then, because why would we not fall asleep on the phone if we don't live together? You know, like we're on FaceTime. We're going to get off the phone and go to sleep. Why? Why? You know, I'm a red flag then if that's the case. But that I had someone within two weeks was just like, I love you. And I was like, what the? F why? <laughs> like, and I literally asked why, because what do you mean you love me? It's it's I we have known of each other's existence for fourteen days. How do you know this? And there's some people who believe in love at first sight. I I don't believe that that's what that was. I'm sorry, I am not convinced. Uh, but they were very adamant that that's what they felt, and I was just like, all right, boo, do you? I did not say it back because I'm not telling you I love you if I don't mean it. I'm sorry. Uh, so that was. That was interesting. Um, this last one. This last one is something that I feel like a lot of people, a lot of people that are givers fall victim to. And I think we have this like savior mentality or like, I don't, I don't know what it is. I don't know what it is that makes us such a perfect target for this. But when you just meet someone and they're asking you for help, like financial help, 
or saying they don't have anybody to help them or nowhere to stay or like this is something that I overlooked <laughs> a while back and as I've learned and as I've grown my outlook on that now is like where are the people in your life like where are the resources and connections that you've made on your life's journey? Like, are are those exhausted? Were you unappreciative? Did you burn those bridges? Why don't you have anyone to ask for help, especially financial help? And you just met me or we just started talking and dating and you're asking me for help. Like, why, why don't you have anyone else to ask? I, I can understand if, like, your family's finances aren't the best, but you don't have any friends. Like, all of y'all are just in a bucket together, just the whole alone and not even have two pennies to put together. Like, nobody has anything to help. Nobody has any credit. Nobody, nobody has anything at all that can help you out in this very dire situation right now. I find that to be very weird, um, especially if it's someone that is pursuing you. I find it to be very weird. Um, I saw a post a while back that said a lot of people are homosexuals. You know, they're homeless um, and they are sexually attracted to whoever can house them. I realize that that's a lot of um, these women that y'all be dating. You know, they, they, they are professional couch surfers. And not to say anything is wrong with being homeless. I understand shit happens. But some people are genuinely not interested in being responsible for themselves and their necessities. They would rather mooch off others. They would rather someone else foot the bill for their necessities while they take care of their luxuries. And of course, I am all for that when it comes to like, if you're in a mutual understanding with someone, not when you're taking advantage of someone. There's a very thin line between that. Um, so either you're a user or that's just the relationship dynamic that you have, you know? So I, I think it's very off-putting <laughs> to be out the gate asking someone for help. Now, if you're asking somebody for money just for, like, luxury, like, oh, just pay for me to get my nails done, my hair done. I want to go shopping, whatever. That's something completely different. That's a luxury. That's not a necessity. That's not something you, I mean, needed to feel better because retail therapy is <laughs> preferred. <laughs> but if you are, like, down and out and you're like, damn, I need help. The first person you're asking is a person you just met. That's a red flag. So, yeah. Um, and then, like I said, too, with that, like, were you unappreciative? Like, did you burn bridges? Like, were you just running people in the ground so you can't ask for nothing again? Because I realize that y'all like to borrow money from people and then treat these people that you borrow money from like they stole money from you. And I think that's something that needs to be studied because I've seen that on more occasions than I'd like to admit. Like I see it all over the Internet. I've seen it with like friends, family, people that I know that they lend people money and then the person starts avoiding them or like just weird shit. And I just don't understand it. So if you're taking advantage of people. You know, maybe you should reconsider that, <laughs> but. Those are some of the red flags that I've overlooked. I'm sure there's more <laughs> because, like I said, I live in Delulu land. I'm just like, oh, you know, everything's great. We're going to be fine. Like, this is nothing. I'll figure it. It comes back to I'll figure it out because, like I said, I sometimes do not prioritize myself because I am so quick to help others that it's like sometimes I get put on the back burner for myself. And it's kind of like. How do you expect people to prioritize you if you're not prioritizing you? And I'm not in a place where I am desperate to be in a relationship. Um, so it's not something that I need to do. Like prioritizing me is my priority. Like I don't feel like I should be settling for anything. And it's not like this is some brand new philosophy that I just came up like, oh my God. Da -da -da. It's always been something that I'm aware of. It's just I never really prioritized it <laughs> because I wasn't dating intentionally I was not putting myself in situations where I felt like this is going to be it you know what I'm saying I was not thinking the long run I was just in the moment for a lot of things and I feel like a lot of people end up in relationships for this is fun this is nice I like them they're nice to me okay we can see what happens here and it's not necessarily like 
I am looking for a life partner. I want something that is stable, consistent with longevity that is going to go the course, you know? So we end up just picking up any old strege and then shit don't work out. We're like, oh, I can't find a good partner. Yeah, because you're settling. You have the door open to literally everybody. You are not limiting the access to you, the gold, the prize. <laughs> and any old stray dog is just coming in. And my friend says this and I'm cracking up because I can't believe I just said that. But she's like, if you feed a stray, they're going to keep coming back. Don't even feed them. Don't even acknowledge them because the little bit that you give them, they're going to be like, oh, yeah, she wants me. Oh, yeah, she loves me. Oh, yeah, she. it's okay. I got a chance. No, you don't. I'm just polite. And I try not to be like such a bitch because people be like, oh, you know, you look so mean. And <laughs> Okay. But I'm, I try not to feed into that. But at the same time, it's kind of like, what purpose do you serve in my life? <laughs> like, what am I... Not to say that I have to get something, but, like, what is the end goal here? And then what? You know, I've been asking that a lot lately, too. Like, and then what? Okay, that's cool. And then what? Because, like, what, like, why are you here? What, what, what are you here for? Because a lot of y'all are here for a good time and not a long time. And I've had a lot of good times. If my dad right now, I've, I can't say I missed out on any fun. I, I cannot, honest to God, you know, speaking of fun, oh my gosh, y'all, carnival, oh, sidebar, I need to wrap this up, did y'all see the drink truck with the freaking push thingy, like you're at the, 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 the machine, the soda machine, and then you have the soda, and then the liquor, <gasps> first of all, yard, oh, I'm gonna fuck up the numbers, 1292, something like, something so, the, the queer, Caribbean party in Atlanta. They at the place that we um I say we like I'm putting it on. <laughs> I have a problem with taking ownership with things. That's my red flag. I, I'm very we, you know, I'm very we. But anyways, they have that for like the beer on tap. Ugh, great fucking idea. Mass bands, your trucks, step it up because that was, and you have to worry about like just oh. I can see that being a little chaotic, though, because, you know, but I feel like the energy at Carnival is never really as chaotic as some other events. So there's a level of patience where we're just like, we're already under vibes and we're chipping with the thing and whatever, whatever is cool. So I don't see it being too rowdy, but I loved that idea. Loved it. So, yes. Anyways, that's all I got for y'all this week. Talk about my fun experiences. Stay tuned for part two. Let me stop. I'm not doing a part two. Um, there, there, there's definitely more that I've overlooked because Delulu land, okay? Delulu land. But like I said, I am delusional. I am not desperate. I am not going to settle for just plain old like fuckery and bad treatment. But I will overlook some foolishness, you know? Or I may have. I'm not going to say I will. I may have. Um, but that's where compromise comes in. <laughs> Please don't take me seriously. Anyways, thank you so much for watching. Make sure you subscribe to the YouTube channel. Make sure you are tapped in, listening on whatever streaming platform suits you best since you don't want to come watch the YouTube. <laughs> um, check out Pointless Creates for all of the handmade crafts. We got ashtrays, rolling trays, car trays, you know, the fun stuff. We do customs as well. Until the end of this month, use code B-L-A-C-K BLACK for a discount. Put that in at checkout, save you some money before you check out. Um, that is off your order. You can use it as many times as you want as your business. I ain't put no limit on it. So if you want to black, 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 that's on you. But it's per purchase, um, per order, not per purchase. So, yeah. Uh, what else? What else? What else? What else? Um, that's all I got. You know, thank you so much. Um, just like everything else we do here, pointless talks, pointless creates, pointless everything. Whether you got here on purpose or by fate, thank you so so much for watching, for tuning in to this episode of Pointless Talks. Bye. <laughs>